Well, hello, my friends. It's Sean Petit, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you're here, and look at this fun, bright, brave piece. Here are the uh, supplies that we'll be using today and the stencils that I'm using today. So I'm starting out on an 8x10 that I gessoed because it had a funky background, and so I just... Um, gessoed it down so I could have some good coverage and then I'm just putting one sheet in the background and it is the She um, is Strong sheet from the resource library and it's perfect for this um, piece for the meaning um, so that's available free to you in the resource library. I'm using I think all deco art products today I'm using deco arts fluid acrylics um, because I just know their colors and so, and I know that I can kind of water them down and change the intensity without ch really changing the color. So I'm starting with the uh, numbers jumbled stencil and just getting some numbers in the background. Um, I, I want them to subtly peek through. And so I'm using raw umber and just kind of getting a good coverage of numbers. Just, I know where my heart's gonna go. Um, so I'm not too worried about that area just getting that all stenciled down. Now I'm coming back with some just um, deco art gesso and um, doing my favorite background. Um, nothing too unpredictable here yet. <laughs> and just kind of um, pushing everything back so that parts of those numbers and parts of those words kind of peek through. Now I am going to be mixing um, some deco art gesso and some transparent red iron oxide, I believe it is. Um, it's listed in the supplies. And um, I chose this color because today's piece is all about taking a risk and being brave. And this is not a color that I go to for my backgrounds. I will use it to create a rust effect or something like that, but my straight background, not something I would choose. And so I'm taking one single step of bravery here and um, creating with this kind of orangish color. I start to push it back just a little bit with my palette knife and some more gesso just to kind of make me feel a little safe <laughs> with this um, fun, bright color. And so I'll just push that back a little bit to kind of neutralize it and again to bring some of that texture back from the gesso because I'm going to put a glaze over the top of it. So I've got my Americana glazing medium and raw umber. I'll mix those together and get a nice glaze. And that glaze will allow me some time to get um, good coverage and still be able to wipe it back. darkening up the edges and just kind of really getting a good feel and kind of aged feel for the background. Now I'm taking some alcohol on my rag and I'm just going to pull that back to reveal the texture of the gesso and the, all the highlights, all the high edges um, of the gesso are going to come clean from the alcohol and really show off that yummy, wonderful texture. So now I'm going to create the heart and I'm, uh, I chose DecoArt's uh, teal, fluid acrylic and teal, and I'm just painting a square and I'm just getting the background cover down. And I will paint you know the size of how I think the heart where how big I think the heart will be and then I'll let that dry and come back and put another coat on so that I've got really good bright teal color so I'm taking some modeling paste and some um, 
Naples yellow, Indian yellow hue. I don't remember what color it is. Again, it'll be listed. Um, but these two colors, I would never, ever put together. Uh, I don't use yellow very often. Um, so this was another step of bravery, another step of taking a risk. I'm using the Mediterranean Midi Mini stencil. I'm going to cover that entire section of turquoise with this um, stencil and I match it up. I kind of go back over the already stenciled area and I, I should have dried it, but I didn't because it wasn't that important and I really actually liked some of the texture that came up when I got my stencil down on the wet modeling paste. <clears throat> but when you put that yellow on top of the turquoise, it goes green, which is another unexpected um, fun thing that I was like, ugh, green, turquoise, yellow. But I was taking a risk. I was stepping outside my comfort zone and of course, I love the results. So I cut my heart out. I've got my car heart. And I was working on just a piece of um, cardstock or mixed media paper. And now I've got, I cut out some flower pieces from just some old jelly prints and some stuff I had in my stash. Stuff that was, again, not cohesive with the piece, but outside of my comfort zone. Um, because I really wanted to be uncomfortable and that's part of the bravery process and we'll talk more about that at the end of the video and so I'm putting all of my pieces together with my deco art map medium So now that I've got all of my pieces down, I need to really make that um, heart stand out. Um, it's blending into the background. There's a lot going on. And so I'm using some gesso, watered down gesso, and I'm just going to kind of create a halo, um, some lightness around that to really make it stand out. And then of course, I will shade it, which will also make it stand out. Um, but just and when as I'm shading around or using the gesso around the heart I'm, I'm really feathering it out so that it doesn't look like I have a straight line around it um, I want those edges to be soft and feathered out um, so that it feels like it's blending into the piece and it really actually helped some of that orange kind of tone down a bit So I've taken some more unpredictable scraps of paper. That black and white is also the um, Mediterranean Minis stencil. I've just painted a heart um, with quinacridone magenta, and I'm going to put all of that down with my DecoArt matte medium. I did the black and white because it would really stand out and again, unpredictable. I stenciled in my Brave with my old type text stencil. 
And now I, I've lost some of those numbers, and the numbers were key because it represents time. Time to be brave, time to take charge, time, time, all of those things. And when I stenciled it in, it was too strong. And so I just wet my rag before it was dry and kind of pulled it up a little bit <clears throat> and really kind of made it soft and aged so that it was there, but just barely. So now I will shade everything, my flowers, my heart, with uh, my charcoal pencil. Then I will shade around the edges with my soft pastel, black soft pastel. Okay, so I'm going to grab some soft pastels in teal, a couple different colors, um, to one, bring, try and bring that teal into the piece a little bit more um, to make it feel cohesive and not disjointed. Um, and because I love teal. <laughs> and um, just really kind of bring that color in, back in a little bit because it kind of went green and um, you don't see much of the turquoise. So I pulled that in and then I'm just going to shade around the edge. I'm going to add some um, dots with my black and white Sharpie pen just because it needs a little bit of brightness. Um, black and white are always neutralizing and kind of brings the piece together. And then I'll add an additional flower at the on the side there and I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end. Um, stick around for the conversation at the end. It's a good one about bravery and taking risk and oh man, it's so good. It speaks to my heart. All the supplies will be listed on the blog and the link to the blog is down below in the YouTube description box. If you enjoyed today's project, um, give me a like and subscribe and um, click the alarm bell so that you never miss a video. And um, I will talk to you next week. Well, hello loves and happy Sunday to you. Look at this brightness, boldness, braveness right here, right here. Oh, this was so fun. It was just playtime and it was taking risks and oh, it was just so good. Um, I, at the end, so a uh, um, couple things. So I went over everything in the video, but at the end, I, I take a picture. I always take a picture with my phone and then we'll take a look at it to see what's missing. And I knew that I needed something down here in the corner because I was going to put this quote, the quote that inspired this here, and it just it didn't feel right. This is so playful and fun, just the way that it is, and um, the color and all that. So I just decided to not put the quote there, but now I've got this like blank space down here. So at the last minute, I put the flowers, the flower down there, and I love it, love it, love it. Um, so uh, let's see what else. Oh, and I wanted to share with you too that I um, I get this question asked all the time. So I use pastels and charcoal, and I will always spray 
every piece I do has charcoal in it or something like that. Um, I always spray every single piece with the fixative and I have used in the past Krylon's workable fixative and honestly it's a little bit better to keeping things in place but I've, I've switched over to this because it's all natural, odor free, it's not harmful to the environment, to yourself, to all those things. Um, it just I need to do a couple coats of this to really fix everything before I put my final coat on top. But this is Spectra, Spectra Fix um, and you can get it um, I'll have a link to it in the sh uh, with all the supplies. So um, I love this. I can spray it inside and I have no worries whatsoever. So um, so let's get into the inspiration behind this. The I in my so I have two journals that I work from planning wise and all that art wise and all that kind of stuff. And I went over that in a video a couple videos ago. But in my business journal, this quote was at the top of the page, and I thought, ah, oh, it was so perfect because it was so singular and kind of broken down. And it was, what single brave decision do you need to make today? And it broke it down to this not huge, grand thing that felt super scary. It was saying, what one single thing, what one single decision, what one single act of bravery do you need to do today? Um, and, and that's how I look at um, growing and, and learning and bravery and courage and all of those things is one step at a time. And so as I did this piece, this the background was very much me. Um, it ha but I used a color that I'm not comfortable with, and that was um, transparent red iron oxide. It gave it kind of an orange color. All of the colors on here, every single step, I took one step into an uncomfortable zone of color for me. So that was first the background. And then it was the heart. Like these two colors together, never in a million years would I do that. Um, but. I just went with one single step, one risk, one single risk. Um, the flowers were total opposite colors from the heart, um, and I went for that one single thing. And then the black and white here on top of all of this, um, one single thing. And, and how I look at it is we take one single step towards um, whatever we need to do. One single step of bravery. Um, and especially when it comes to creating, because I get a lot of, and this is with life too, this is kind of how I do it all, all across the board, but I get a lot of people saying that they're afraid to start creating. And it's just one single step of bravery. And what's the worst that can happen? That it doesn't, you don't like it? Well, then you can throw it out. Then you can make a new one then you can try something else. But we, the, the, the key is starting. The key is taking a step. It has to just be one, just one. Then another, and then another, and then another. Bravery isn't about not having fear. It's about doing it even when you're afraid. So taking that risk in whatever it is, your risk could be um, putting one piece of color down on a canvas or opening up the journal and putting some paper down. Your risk, your bravery could be making a phone call for a job. Your risk could be making the resume for a job. Uh, it, it's, it's one single step at a time. Your Bravery could be registering for a class. Um, it's just, and, and we have to stop there. We can't, because I know for me, in my anxiety control space, um, I, I start thinking about, okay, well, if I register for this class, then I have to go, and then I have to figure out how to get there, and then I have to, and that's where we get lost in the fear. And we are not taking a risk, and we're not being brave. But all we have to do is one single thing at a time and that's it 
So that's what this entire piece represents. I took one risk of this orangey color, then I took another risk of this color, then I took another risk of this black and white piece and these colors because they don't aren't really cohesive with this. Um, all of that was a risk and um, I love it. I absolutely love it. Is it my standard go-to for creating? No, but it could be. I might have a new uh, series of colors. I just love it. It's so fun. It's so playful. And it's, and it's all about risk and being brave. And that quote, the quote, the quote, the quote, what single, not how, what 500 brave decisions do you, what single brave decision do you need to make today? Not when you feel like it. Not when you get around to it today. And then tomorrow you can say, well, now what single brave decision do I need to make today? And that's it. Small, simple steps to bravery, to taking a risk, to getting started, to seeing your dreams, to creating the art, to building the relationship, whatever it is. One single step is how it starts. All right, my loves, I hope your Sunday is wonderful and restful, and I hope that you take a look at what your brave decision needs to be today. And I hope that you always, always know that you are loved.